Warning, the mushroom we are foraging for today is considered the highest risk fungi to forage in the UK. If you are going to forage for it, do so with extreme caution. If you make a mistake on this one, it could be very serious. Hi, I'm Chris from Rewilding Us and in this video I'm going to be running through the safe identification of the sheathed wood tuft, Coenoramyces mutabilis. I'll also be doing some comparisons against its deadly lookalike, the funeral bell, and we'll be using some footage I took earlier on in the year of that species. And I have an extra tip for you too, which is something I discovered when I was running through the identification of the funeral bell and comparing that to the sheathed wood tuft. And it's something that I am yet to see that's written in any of the books or from any other foragers. So hopefully this tip is going to be extra useful to you if you do decide to hunt for the sheathed wood tuft. Mistakes have been made by people misidentifying the sheathed wood tuft and it's led to fatalities. The funeral bell contains lethal amounts of amatoxins. These are the same toxins that are found in the formidable Amanita family in species like the death cap and the destroying angel. Another common mistake is that people have foraged for sheathed wood tuft and collected a basket full and not checked every single one and a funeral bell has mistakenly got into the basket it's been growing amongst the sheath wood tuft. Foraging for sheath wood tuft there is no room for complacency. I only recommend that you forage for the sheath wood tuft if you have successfully located and positively identified the funeral bell. Now that that's been said, let's run through the ID process of the sheathed wood tuft. The sheathed wood tuft is a small orange brown fungi that grows in dense clusters on typically deciduous dead wood. Now it has also been found on coniferous wood as well and its counterpart or its deadly lookalike, the funeral bell, has a preference for coniferous deadwood, but that has also been found on deciduous deadwood. One of the features with the funeral bell is that generally it grows solitary or in small groups on deadwood. However, I have found it in larger clusters um, which could be perceived as a sheath wood tuft. So there's certain features of the funeral bell and the sheath wood tuft that are weak features to be going by to associate your identification with. However, they could be indicators. So I am here in a beech forest and these sheath wood tuft are growing on a tree stump. The fact that I'm in a beech forest is strongly suggestive that this stump is a deciduous tree. However, I am not certain about that because the stump is so degraded that it's too difficult for me to tell with certainty. One of the features on the sheath wood tuft, which is relatively unique with this species, is that it's hygrophanous, which means that it changes colour when it dries. So if it gets moist, it darkens, and as it dries out, the colour lightens. And with the sheath wood tuft, the mushroom dries from the inside out. On the funeral bell, which is also hygrophanous, it dries from the outside first. So the outside will lighten up first before it dries in the middle, in contrast to the sheath wood tuft. Underneath the sheath wood tuft, it has pale okra crowded gills that are sinuate, they're attached to the stipe. And on the funeral bell, the gills are also crowded they're pale uh, to okra um, and they are slightly more decurrent. However, that's not always so obvious. It's not a very apparent feature that you can go by. Both fungi have a ring, remnants of a veil on the stipe as well. But one of the key differences between the sheathed wood tuft and the funeral bell is in the stipe. And the sheathed wood tuft has got a lighter stipe above the ring and below the ring it's scaly. This feature is not always apparent. Sometimes through weathering it can disappear, the scales could be rubbed off. And so again, this feature, although this is going to be your strongest feature to distinguish them in terms of your visual features, 
it's not always that apparent. The funeral bell has a smooth stipe with silver patches over it. The fact that there are no scales on the stipe is quite a distinctive feature uh, to separate the two. However, with the silver uh, patching on the stipe, sometimes this could resemble scales as well and it's something that you need to be very aware of so that you don't make any mistakes and misinterpret uh, some of the features for something that you might actually see on a sheathed wood tuft. The spore print on the sheathed wood tuft and the funeral bell is both brown and the spore print isn't going to help you very much unless you're looking at it under a microscope and these spores are actually different shapes but you would need to do that with every single mushroom before you eat it. As a forager it's not something I do very often. On my Instagram page I've put up a reel where I taste test the funeral bell. What I learned was that the funeral bell has no taste. It has no taste whatsoever, which in my opinion makes it even more dangerous. The other aspect about the funeral bell is that it does not have a smell either. So the species, the specimens that I've smelt, uh, I didn't get any smell from. And this, this is what marries up with what's said in the books. The books say that the funeral bell has no smell or taste. They also say that the sheathed wood tuft has no smell or taste. However, I have also smell and taste tested the sheathed wood tuft and all of the different species or different specimens of sheathed wood tuft that I've smelt and tasted, they all have a pleasant mushroomy smell and a pleasant mushroomy taste, which is quite apparent, especially in contrast to the funeral bell, which is nil. My additional foragers tip for you is that you also smell the fungi, smell the sheath wood tuft, and it should have a pleasant to a mushroomy aroma. And if you taste it, it's certainly got a mushroomy taste. This tip here is something that I haven't heard from any foragers and it's not depicted in the books. I'm not entirely sure why. Perhaps I have a better sense of smell and a better taste uh, than some of the other mycologists that have written the books. I don't know. And I don't know if any other foragers have tried this. If any of you have tried this, please let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear your opinions on it as well. It's quite important, I think, for all of us to develop and share our knowledge so that we can really refine what we're doing out here in the field. Foraging for sheath wood tuft is advanced foraging. It's not something that I recommend for beginners. And I know as you get more experienced, you want to test your skill level, your expertise, and your curiosity can get the better of you sometimes. So this video is about me sharing my experience and my expertise with you so that we make the right decisions and we get the identification of sheath wood tuft bang on because this really is one that you need to do that with and like I said earlier there is no room for complacency. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.